Well, anyway, the guy's name is Wallace. He, um, he owns his bar, Johnny. He's one of the Coda Street girls just, like, decked him right upside the head. I just want to do something like that. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> well, obviously said he wasn't interested, and that's why she did it. Well, it's certainly grabbing the ball by the horns. Well, who's working in that area, anyway? I, I used to know this girl, Dolores. <laughs> um, she doesn't work there anymore. I, I, you wouldn't have to know, would you? Like, why are you busting my chops about this? I already told you, honey. I don't know who being the guy. Sorry, I just thought maybe you might know. Hey, how about I buy you a drink? Uh, uh, I just got ready to go. Or that's even better. We could have the drink up at my place. Look, huh? um, honey, I don't think you need a girl. I think you need some aspirin and a nap. Oh, come on. No, look, I got money, if uh, that's what you're worried about. Why don't you give the lady a break, huh? What are you, or Pim? <laughs> hey, look, I'm willing to pay the price. Do yourself a favor and bug off. Can I talk to you, please? I could have handled this. Oh, sure you could. You know, I should have known that you were dead set on getting yourself into some kind of trouble. <laughs> hey, buddy, listen. You can let, let go of me. Hey, listen, buddy. You don't want to... Hey, listen. <laughs> No, you've done it. Oh, you hurt my arm. I'm going to hurt it worse if you don't calm down. Now, calm down. police business. I know. You can handle this guy, Christine? No problem, Inspector. Hey, I'm not into that kind of stuff. Oh, can you give me a little time to dry out, friend? See. She's a cop. Christine is one of our best undercovers. Oh, great. I feel like a real idiot. I was asking all these questions about the, the girl that was hassling breath. I know, I know. I was watching. You were watching me make a fool out of myself? Eden, I warned you to stay out of this. I told you you were going to get yourself in trouble. You did something on your own. Great. Now I get to hear the I told you so. You just stumbled into the middle of a vice operation. We weren't even going for that guy. Now we're going to have to start again some other night. Sorry. Forgive me. When we get home, I'm going to take you over my knee. Well, you're going to pay for that one. Let's go. I can't go right now. I'm waiting for somebody who actually may be able to help us find something out about the Coda Street girl. Who? Uh, she's a she's a madam, and she's in a position to talk. A real madam? A real... You know, you should stick around. You might be able to pick up some pointers. I mean on your wardrobe. Do you feel like getting slugged twice in one evening, hmm? I thought you were supposed to go to that reception for Dr. Nicholas tonight. I was, but academics bore me and so do receptions. Besides, I think the man's a little strange. Yeah, but aren't they having it at the Orient Express? Yeah. I mean, Daddy's going to be a little surprised not to see me there, but there should be a big crowd. He won't miss me. He won't miss you? Are you kidding? You shouldn't be setting stuff like that aside to do stupid stuff like this. Look, I have responsibilities that I care about. One is to the man I love. The man I'm going to marry. The second is to Brick. I care about him, and even Daddy can understand that. I want to be here. Guess there's no point in arguing about it. No. Do you like the music? It's not bad. You want to dance with me? I thought you'd never ask. Pleased to meet you. I'm Sylvia. You're, uh... I'm the businesswoman 
the madam? I have a feeling you can give me the name of someone who will be able to help me. Well, that's possible. Some of those unfortunate girls who do walk the streets attempt to work with me from time to time. Of course, um, I'm not able to deal with those types. My service deals with very elite, not to mention discreet, A clientele. Let me spell it out for you. You see, you're not going to have any clientele whatsoever if you don't come across with a name. I mean, you can call it a computer dating service, an escort thing, whatever you want to. The, the fact is, I know what the service is, and you know that I can shut it down. Well, for someone requesting a favor, you're certainly not being very civil. Well, my manners are a little bit strained. What can I tell you? You know, a good friend of mine is facing a prison term he doesn't deserve. On the other hand, I got you over here who... You're breaking the law, and you're proud of it. The name of the person you want to speak to is a woman named Lanny Lipton. Room 18 at the Royal Court Motor Inn. Thank you very much. Uh, and, and hold on a second. Um... Thank you. I want you to do me a favor and tell your girls to be very careful. You see, there have been three attempted rapes in the last few weeks in this town, and one of them actually happened. I will, and thank you for the warning. Oh, and nice to see you again, Edie. I'm sorry. You know, I knew you looked familiar, but how do I know you? Sylvia Potter, Lyman Prep. We were on the same debating team. Sylvia Potter, you were president of Junior Achievement. Well, I always had a good mind for business. <laughs> Maybe we should do lunch sometime. <laughs> well, you seem to have gotten yourself involved in a prestigious project. Yeah, Capwell's no doubt will want to invest in it. I don't suggest they try. Yeah, I'm getting a little tired of the cheap shots you're taking at the family. A oh, cheap shot? That, that was a cheap shot, was it? If you're not man enough to come out and spell out the reasons for your animosity, you have no right to put us down. Can't you try and tell me about my rights? Sylvia Potter. I can't believe that. No, I found it very interesting. The two of you learned your business skills at the same place. I hate my job. I like your job. It's much more interesting. Oh, my job is only interesting when you're around, pal. Trust me, most days it'll put you to sleep. You know, there's always something that I wanted to do. Well, uh... We're alone. I mean, no one's going to stop you. Pull out of those red lights, Castillo. Sorry, Capwell. Why? Yeah, don't be such a spoil sport. Well, we didn't, we're just going to talk to somebody. We can't use the siren. That's an abuse of privilege. Yeah, well, I bet that's your part of your job you like the most. What? Visiting girls in hotel rooms. Speaking of which, you should have seen the one I visited tonight. I mean, a little too much makeup, but what a fox. And she could dance. Attention all units, attention all units. A shooting has been reported at the Orient Express restaurant. Cars in the vicinity, please proceed to location with caution. Oh my God, Cruz, my whole family is there. sending those threats, aren't you? I warned you not to come tonight. I warned you! Get him out of here till the police come. Take him in the back room. You all right, sir? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Good thing you move as quickly as you do. That was close. Where are you going? I'm leaving. Jeff Green, you just saved Mason's life. You're going to walk out of here? Yeah, hey, I know. Looks like I screwed things up again, doesn't it? Just when you thought you had me pegged. <laughs> Kelly, what happened? If somebody just tried to shoot at Mason, Jeffrey stopped him. All right. Mason, are you all right? Yeah, the guy's uh, in the back with the two guards. Who was it? Apparently some man that Mason convicted back when he was assistant DA. Did you see Jeffrey? Uh, yes, he was leaving as I was coming in. Saved my life. Got to thank him. Wait, do you have to go now? 
Yeah, yeah, I've got to find him. Eden, would you drive Victoria home? Of course. I was terrified for Mason's room. I'm glad he gave us his time together. There was something that I wanted to say to you. What is it? Well, it was about what we discussed the other day. My pregnancy. You see, I, I know the baby is Mason's, and I, and I believe that. And, and Cruz does, too, beyond a doubt. Uh, is that what you wanted to say? Um, no. It's just that even if uh, the baby were Cruz's, it wouldn't matter. Because we're together now, and nothing will break us up. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad you feel that way. I wanted to tell you something, too. I love Mason very much. That's why I married him. I've gotten over my feelings for Cruz. Victoria, I'm sorry. No, you I, I really shouldn't have brought it up. Okay, is it really? Well, it's a moot point anyway because the baby is Mason's. Well, yeah, well, I think it's important that we both can say what's on our minds. I, I don't think that there should be as much of a strain between us as there was in the past. I agree. You know, I don't think a few months ago either one of us would have thought we'd be sisters-in-law. Oh, that's for sure. <laughs> but I want you to feel free to tell me, you know, what's ever on. Oh, you too. I, I really do. I, you can talk to me any time. You know, we're both very lucky. We've managed to find the right man. Yes, we are lucky. I guess there can be happy endings Oh. Well, oh, here we are. Thanks for driving me home. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Do you want me to walk you back up to your apartment? Please. I know it's silly, but I still hate going in alone at night. Oh, Victoria, it's understandable, especially after what you went through. Well, sooner or later I'll get over it, but I do appreciate it. Oh, you're Thank welcome. Because you. your purse is down here. Okay, thanks. <laughs>